Hey guys, Mrs. Clark here. Today I want to talk to you about creating a fishbone diagram. And let's answer the questions. What is a good way to find the causes of a critical problem? How does it work? And what has any of this got to do with fish? Eh, let's find out. We'll get started. If you get a little creative, you can look at this diagram and go, well, yeah, I can kind of see how there's a fish here. Like if this is the head of the fish and these are the little rib bones, it's kind of fishy, right? So what's the point of this thing? Well, this is a really useful diagram when you're dealing with a critical problem because it forces you to look at all the different kinds of things that can be going wrong. Because if you've got a critical problem, Plainly, there's a lot of little problems contributing to it, or we just fix the thing, right? So it makes you, instead of just pointing fingers, it's your fault, it's that fault, it makes you really be objective and ask yourself, okay, what are the different ways that we're ma that little problems are coming together to make a big old problem? Let's look at one that is common to lots of middle and high schools, and that is the lunch lines are way too long. So if I want to, if the effect or the outcome of our critical problem is we're spending too much time in line and not getting to eat very well, so we'll say lunch line too long kids can't eat. Whoop, eat. There we go. That's the outcome. People don't get enough time to eat because they're waiting in line for, to pay for the lunch too long. Well, if you think about that, there's a lot going on that makes that happen. If we're talking about people, I mean manpower. If I'm talking about environment, well, yeah, environmental issues that contribute to a problem. Is there something wrong in the method, how we're trying to accomplish it? Could the materials be part of the problem or the equipment or lack of it? Well, think about your own school. I'm going to think about mine, and let's talk through how this works. So if we were to look at people, that can mean a couple of things. It could be a matter of training. Maybe the poor lady who's trying to deal with everybody's lunch number isn't trained very well to handle the situation. And so training can be an issue that we could address with our people. I once worked at a school that didn't have the keypads and the kids had to tell the lunch lady their number. Um, and for one person in particular, it took her so, so long to get it done. If we walked in and saw her sitting at the register, everyone was like, oh, no lunch today because we're never going to get through this line. And there was another person who did really, really well. So we would be like, why in the world? is Tammy not on the register because she's the one that does that does this really really well. Um, so choosing the right person for the job is a people problem. If you're continuing to put someone on who is untrained or unskilled that could be part of our problem. Another issue can be environment. Sometimes the spaces are so tight for the little checkout places in the cafeteria that the lines all get intertwined and people are on top of each other and it's hard to get order so that people can get through. So let's jot that in. Another environmental issue can be the noise that's simply inherent to school cafeterias. If the person running the lunch line can't communicate with the people in the line, it makes the whole process take that much longer. When we're talking about methods, we're talking about how the work actually gets done. So here you might be talking about using keypads rather than having some poor random sixth grader screaming his lunch number four times at the lunch lady who can't hear over the noise. Or, you know, is there a way they could charge people going in to the lunch line rather than coming out in a place where they don't have a lot of snacks and stuff that could work better? Is there a better way? to route all this and make it work. When you look at the materials section, they're talking about the raw materials that goes in to make maybe a product. So if you've got some flimsy or faulty material that's gumming up a project, that's what you talk about. But it's not really relevant to the problem that we are looking at right now. The last part of our fishbone here is equipment. And a lot of times that can be the, the base problem in a larger critical problem. 
um, in our case, we've got two stations for checking people out, but there are 300 people in the grade, you know. So I would guess on any given day, you're looking at 175 kids trying to get through two lunch lines and we've got 25 minutes for lunch. So that could be, there just aren't enough stations. Another equipment thing could be, well, what if instead of having keypads, we just had barcodes on the back of our IDs and you scan that thing in, it would probably go a little faster. What if it could automatically deduct from your account? Um, things like that, the equipment advances that could make all of this work a whole lot better. So if you take a look, the fact that it takes forever to get through a lunch line and then you have to sit down and narf super fast in order to get food down before you've got to go back to class has a lot of smaller problems that if we could address even just a few of them could improve the process. We've got people need to be trained, people who are skilled at the position should be in the position. We've got a confined space with a lot of noise. Maybe the methods that we're using to check kids out at lunch aren't the best ones and maybe we should rethink how we actually go about doing it. Materials, like I said, in this case, not really relevant because the raw materials for lunch, well, yeah, that's a whole nother fishbone there, buddy. Uh, and the equipment, we simply don't have enough stations, um, in which case we would also need more manpower. And, the, you know, sometimes the keypads can be slow too. So all of these go together you see how it works um, and that actually works pretty well with whatever critical problem a person is working with. So today we answered the questions what is a good way to find the causes of a critical problem? A fishbone diagram makes you look at the categories of smaller prob problems that add up to a bigger problem. It can help you see what smaller problem to attack. How does it work? Well it's sectioned off, we list in the the what we have going on so that we can see what the problem is. What's any of this got to do with fish? Well, it looks like a dead fish when it's all done. So, thus the name. It's been awesome working with you. Good luck working on your own critical problem.